discussing about whether the whether a given decomposition is functional dependency preserving or not so in this video let us take few more examples of functional dependency preserving decompositions okay so assuming that we have the following relation which is r a b c d this is the relation which is given and the functional dependencies which are given they are like this a determines b b determines c c determines d and d determines a now they are saying this given relation is broken down into three relations or you can say the given relation is decomposed into the three relations number 1 r1 with attributes ab number 2 r2 with attributes bc number 3 r3 with attributes cd so we have these three uh, bro uh, no broken you know these three uh, decompositions of the given relation now first of all before even even before we are checking whether decomposition is functional dependency preserving or not first of all check whether this decomposition is lossless or not so if the decomposition is not lossless then we will not even check whether it is functional dependency preserving or not so you can see in the case of r1 and r2 uh, r1 is having the attribute ab and r2 is having the attribute bc in r1 and r2 the common attribute is b and b now you can see because of this functional dependency which is given we can say that b is at least a key attribute in this relation therefore r1 and r2 is a lossless decomposition now if you combine r1 and r2 then you are going to get a b c as attributes and we have the relation r3 which is cd now here the common attribute is c therefore at least c should be a key attribute in one of the table and because of this a uh, function dependency we can say c is a key attribute here okay now we'll come back to this and we'll see whether a decomposition is uh, this decompositions are lossless or not so see here we have two attributes here we have two attributes here we have two attributes now how will you check whether uh, what are the additional functional dependencies what are the additional functional dependencies which are valid for this for these two attributes there are uh, what are the functional dependencies which are possible they are a determines phi a determines b b determines a and b determines phi these are the functional dependencies which can be there but you have to say out of these functional dependencies which are valid okay how am i uh, taking this functional dependency is for these attributes a and b what are the subsets of a and b are possible the subset can be phi a b and ab these are the four subsets possible for a and b again in the second way also you have to take these four subsets that is phi a b ab now you can combine this the uh, phi can phi can determine phi phi can determine a phi can determine b and phi can determine ab then a can determine phi a can determine a a can determine b a can determine ab again b can determine phi b can determine a b can determine b and b can determine ab again ab can determine phi ab can determine a ab can determine b and ab can determine ab now here out of these some of them are actually you know trivial like a can determine a itself ab can determine a ab can determine b ab can determine ab or ab can determine phi these are trivial functional dependencies so we are not going to discuss about the trivial functional dependencies we have to see out of these functional dependencies what are valid so the first one is valid because it is already is trivial so with no need of taking this second one a determines b this a determines b exist in the original functional dependency therefore it is valid third one is b determines a how can you say b determine a is valid if in the original functional dependencies you take b closure and you get a in b closure then you can say b determines a is also valid so b closure is b c d a so here in b closure we are getting a therefore this functional dependency is also valid and this is also trivial so no need of writing the trivial functional dependencies so a determines b is valid and b determines a is valid right so again for r2 let us find the functional dependencies which are not trivial that is b determines c and c determines b out of these functional dependencies you can clearly see b determines c is already given here therefore it is valid and we have to say say whether c determines b or not that means for, for to say this one in the original functional dependencies take c closure and what are the c what are the uh, functional dependencies you what are the uh, attributes you can get in c closure c closure will give you c d a b so in c closure we are getting b therefore c determines b is also valid functional dependency okay now in r3 c determines d and d determines c these are the two functional dependencies which are possible now c determines d is already given but we have to identify whether d determines c is valid or not 
to say whether the de determined C is valid in original table take D closure so in D closure we are getting A B C D and because we are getting C therefore this is also a valid functional dependencies okay so what are the sets we are having three sets this is representing the set F1 which is having the functional de dependencies A determine B and B determine A we have the set F2 here which is representing B determines C and C determines B we have the set F3 which is C determines D and D determines C so these are the three sets now how can you see this decomposition is functional dependency preserving if we take F1 union F2 union F3 closure then it should be equivalent to a original F closure okay that means these should cover these okay in the same way these should cover these if they cover each other then we can say these two functional dependencies are uh, these are functional dependency preserving so if we do f1 union f2 union f3 then what are the functional dependencies we can get that is a determines b next we are getting b determines a next b determines c next c determines b next c determines d next d determines c these are the functional dependencies we can get with this now what is f f is representing a determines b b determines c c determines d and d determines a now out of all these out of all these this is already present here so no problem already present here so no problem already present here so no problem and uh, d determines a we have to whether say whether d determines a or not whether d determines a or not so to see whether d determines a we can check how can you check we already given that d determines c and c determines b right and b determines a therefore we can say d determines a by transitive functional dependency so this is also covered here <coughs> in the same way we have to check whether this functional dependency b determines a is covered here or not you can see here again transitively it is covering and this is also covering transitively therefore this decomposition is FD preserving this de decomposition is functional dependency preserving okay now let us take the next example